Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. Welcome to the Nissan Aria and welcome to our first range test of this car. You might already be able to hear a little bit. It is slightly windy out today, which means the range test, it's not necessarily going to be the perfect conditions for this. It is the only day I can range test this car though. Just scheduling and it's a hot car in demand. A lot of journalists wants to want to play around with it. I can't wait for the weather to get better, but we have a lot of things going for us today. We got the big battery all wheel drive platinum plus Aria. I'm going to explain the spec. I'm going to explain the testing procedures. And then of course we're going to drive it from a hundred percent till dead. And then we're going to head out on our range range test should be well that'll be during the range test is when we drive it to dead <laughs> let's do it this is the nissan aria platinum plus e-force and there are so many different trims for the aria with different specs and everything but the one thing you need to know is this is the all-wheel drive that's what the e-force denotes and it is the platinum plus the plus means it has the big battery pack which is 91 kilowatt hours gross and about 87 kilowatt hours usable that is a sizable battery pack the only vehicle with a larger battery pack in this class that i can think of would be mustang mach E. Uh, that has 91 kilowatt hours usable. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how this car performs in the test today. Other versions of the Nissan Aria can get as low as low 200 miles of range in the base model all-wheel drive or they even have a big battery front wheel drive called the Venture Plus as sort of the range spec. So you got to go to Nissan's USA, Nissan USA's website. It's extremely confusing to figure out which spec to choose I really cannot recommend going all the way out for this platinum model. I'll show you why just in here. It is beautiful. It has blue Napa leather seats. It's got a nice roof up here. It's got the big Bose sound system. But the problem is, is it's $62,900 roughly, $62,700. And that is just too much money, sixty-three dollars for a car that does not get the tax credit. You can actually buy a Model Y Performance for less money than this particular spec. And it has a higher EPA rated range. I'm not sure about real world. I need to run one in the in our 70 mile per hour test soon. And, um, you know, and it gets the, the big tax credit. So not everyone can qualify. I understand. I would recommend looking at other versions of the Nissan Aria, perhaps not the Platinum Plus, unless you find a good deal on one. So let's talk about what we're going to be experiencing today. We are going to be charging this car, DC fast charging it to 100% state of charge. Once it reaches 100% state of charge, it means we'll have a warm battery because I ripped it before plugging in. We're DC charging it all the way to full. Uh, we're going to depart on our range test. Now, before we do that, the tire pressures are set to manufacturer suggested pressures. It's 41 PSI front and rear. They're set there. We're on Bridgestone Alenza tires. I actually believe the ID4 uses a similar tire to this. We're on 255 20s in the back. I'm trying to see if it's an EV specific tire. I do see it has the uh, probably the noise foam on the inside, although the impact noise of the tire is still quite high. So 255 rears, 255, 45, 20 fronts. So we are on a square setup. They are not staggered. And, um, you know, that's that's a pretty high quality tire, especially for a Nissan. I'm glad they specced up and went for, I would say, a, a fairly good tire. Uh, so that that's good. So tire pressures are set, 20 inch wheels. Looks like they have some aero blade stuff going on here. Uh, the motors themselves, this one's almost 400 horsepower, 390 horsepower thereabouts, low 400 pound feet of torque. It's fast. This thing rips, not off the line, but when it's up to speed, it really goes. And that's pretty indicative of induction motors. I had to jump inside because of the wind, but you have to understand this car does not use permanent magnet motors, which means there's not going to be flux related losses at speed. It also means you don't need a clutch disconnect to compensate for that. So having externally excited motors means that they can pretty much just freewheel when they're co when when you're coasting. Now there are some um, parasitic losses when it comes to having an extra motor on an axle, but it's really not much uh, there. So there's a few different drive modes in the car. Basically, the testing procedure is charge it to full, throw it in eco mode, which prioritizes the front motor. They do have different gear ratios. The front motor is optimized more for high speed cruising. We're going to get up to speed at 70 miles an hour GPS. We're going to run up to Cheyenne, 
east onto I-80. And then when we get about, you know, 60% state of charge, as usual, we'll turn around, come back and end here dead. We'll drive the car all the way to 0% and see how far it goes. Um, I do have to mention a couple things, which is the weather here. It is beautiful outside. Six, mid 60 degree weather outside the car saying 62, my phone saying 67. It's really good condition for weather. But especially as we go north, the wind is brutal. Now, thankfully, the stretch to Cheyenne is pretty short when we go north. We do have some winds out of the west heading east. So we'll have a bit of a side wind, but then we'll have a direct tailwind all the way out into Nebraska. So what it's gonna do is it's actually going to tell us like we might be able to go farther than we could. So I might even turn around a bit earlier to compensate for the big headwind that we're gonna have on the way in. Now, that's why we run loop style tests. And so if we have a tailwind, we can compensate with headwind. It's not a perfect science, but it works pretty well. The side that we can't compensate for are the side winds and that we're just gonna have to eat it in this test. So I think let's let's do the test. Let's see how it does. The winds are, are dying down slightly. It may not be that bad, but I just wanna share that cautionary tale that this isn't the perfect day for it. Um, it is the only day I'm able to do the test though. We are getting very close to 100% state of charge now. It is down to 14 kilowatts at 98%. It actually has a fairly good charging curve. Sits at about 130 kilowatts from six to 48%. And then it just slowly dies down after that. You'll notice this one also has the big glass roof, but I've actually closed it with this nice shade so that we can reduce the air conditioning drag on the test, just all part of testing procedures. And uh, so that's all normal. The, everything here is looking pretty good. The car got the extra wash wax, so it's really slippery. <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, we got ProPilot, Nissan ProPilot with hands-free eye tracking situation. I'm looking forward to trying that out. We're gonna reset the trip odometer here once we complete, and then we'll hit the road. Now, yesterday I did the charging test on this car and it does take a little while to top charge. You'll see that video coming shortly after this one goes live. So we may have to wait a little bit just to head out of here as we jam every last electron we can into the battery pack, but uh, that's all right. We'll leave as soon as the car completes charging. We are sitting here still at the same come and go fueling station doing one kilowatt. You know us, we gotta let the car complete charging. It's just been sitting for a while. It actually says 35 minutes to full, but based off of my experience yesterday, it was not that way. It completed much quicker than it, su it is suggesting, but uh, let's hope it does at least, because it's been I don't know. We've been charging now for an hour and five minutes just to go from 80 to 100%. We haven't quite hit 100% yet. And not much longer after that clip, we are now at 100%. I've shut climate control off, so we're not burning anything just sitting here. So let's unplug, reset the trip calculations and go. By the way, I don't know if I've mentioned it yet, but this Aria has only 1200 miles on it. So it's a very fresh car. There is a battery capacity display inside the vehicle. It's indicating 100% battery capacity, as I would hope it would with liquid thermal management. And uh, I do like that I can just close both flaps this way but I wish pulling the DC pin would also open both very BMW style. So they got halfway with the ports there. Anyway, let's not delay. That was over an hour and 15 minutes to charge this thing from 80 to 100%. And granted, you know, you could have left at 98% an hour ago. It's just the top charge had to, I think, do some balancing up there. So what we're going to do now is turn the car on. Here we go. We got the live stream rocking. We're going to put the drive mode into eco. We're gonna scroll over to our efficiency, manual reset, hold to reset, uh, all items, confirm reset, yes. And then we'll also have our since charge, um, which I'm also going to reset all items on. So now that that's reset, we're 100%, the car's predicting 221 miles, which seems awfully low for an 87 kilowatt hour usable battery pack Again, considering this is not a permanent magnet uh, car, it shouldn't really have issues, but I've been driving mostly around town. So into reverse we go, backup camera is on, um, climate control. Let's just get this set really quick first because I'm a little bit out of sorts. It's been a while since I've done a range test. Everything is in auto, we're driver only. We're gonna turn off the cooled seats on both sides. Why would it put the passenger cooled seat on when no one's in the passenger seat and the seatbelt's not buckled? I don't know, it seems like a waste. So we're good there, into reverse. Let's rock and roll, let's do this thing. And um, 
pretty good turning radius. Windows up, sunshade is closed. 62 degrees according to the car, beautiful sunny day. And um, we are heading out on the range test in the Aria. Very much looking forward to this. Why is the AC blasting so unnecessarily hard? I'm actually just going to manually turn down the fan slightly there just to a reasonable temperature. I usually run auto, but if there's something egregiously out of sorts, then I will, uh, I think we need a little bit more than what I set it to. I will uh, turn it down. So here we go, rocking. Uh, the plan is to jump over on the highway onto I-25 heading north. You can see on that flag off in the distance, side winds going on through those trees. So that is, um, that is the one downside for today. Let's inch out here. The other thing I wanna show you is um, the prioritization of the front motor here in uh, efficiency mode. So you can see here, as I just touched the throttle, we're using pretty much front motor only, and then the rear motor will come along for a little bit of help. Now, what's funny is in sport mode, it's actually the exact opposite of that. So, uh, which I really prefer and I like. Very little regen here. I'm gonna put it in B mode just to increase regen, but the brake pedal is blended. So touching the brake will give us everything. Uh, the efficiency won't change basically between D and B mode. There's also the E step, um, which is similar to one pedal driving, except not. It just does blended braking when you lift off the accelerator pedal. We're going to gently merge onto the highway and get us up to 70. It looks like it's pretty empty roads on this Sunday afternoon, which is great. We need to hit 70 by the time we reach the end of the on-ramp here, which we are on track for currently, 70 miles an hour. We are going to lock in the speed at 70. I'm going to confirm with my GPS device that 70 is a true 70. Nissan Pro Pilot is on and it is now on hands-free when it switches to, to blue. I'll do a little segment on Nissan Pro Pilot Assist uh, 2.0 when we're cruising along. But as long as it can see my eyes looking at the road, then um, we're in hands-free. Let me confirm 70 is truly 70 and I'll be back with you here momentarily. We are just crossing into Wyoming. This Honda kind of cut us off. I'm not drafting him. And uh, this is always the Wyoming sign test. Anything over 90% when we cross this point, 90% or over, should give us a good score. And here we are at 90% crossing the sign. So that's very good. Uh, really looking forward to seeing how this will do. It just switched from eye tracking to hands-on uh, lane assistance. And I'll explain that all in just a little bit of time. And I think that's because I blocked the uh, sensor with the, my camera here. Now we're back to hands-free, which would indicate a blue graphic. So great, cruising along. Wind actually hasn't been that bad, so maybe we'll get lucky and this will be a great test. That, my fingers are crossed, but uh, so far just enjoying the ride in the yard. Welcome to 75% state of charge. We're just about to cross into Nebraska. We've got 70 miles almost now, 69.3. But keep in mind, just in that rear view mirror, is about 30 miles an hour of wind pushing us forward. So the efficiency, very good. It's actually not very good, um, <laughs> but we actually will get probably a little bit better efficiency as we lose elevation here. This is like what Ionic 5 gets at 70 miles an hour, 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. So maybe, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe the efficiency of the Aria won't actually be that amazing because if it's doing this with such a big tailwind, I don't know, that's gonna be interesting. But we have a little bit of cloud cover. Weather's still looking nice. Aria is claiming 55 degrees, but I think it actually shows a little bit colder than what it is, but that's okay. And uh, we're just cruising along here, doing great. And uh, no traffic to speak of. This is wonderful uh, driving conditions aside from the wind. Well, we are driving along here and I wanted to talk a little bit about the Nissan driver assistance that I'm experiencing here. And just to pull up the driver assistance menu, Actually, it's over here, there we go. You can see we have this blue steering wheel and the blue steering wheel indicates that we are on hands-free eye tracking right here, um, uh, lane centering. And I have to say, it's actually one of my favorite systems I've ever used. It is rock solid, even with crazy wind. The eye tracking isn't so sensitive, so I do have a chance to glance over here or pick up some Doritos before it yells at me. Um, unlike uh, GM stuff and unlike Ford stuff. Voice Thank you, the voice recognition is crazy. And it really works well. So loving the Nissan ProPilot. They nailed this software. 
It also does automatic lane changes. You can see as soon as I hit the turn signal, the screen goes green there at the bottom left, and that indicates that it wants my hands on the wheel for the lane change. As soon as we're locked in the lane, you can see it's now gone back to blue. It also does show some cars around, so this is a great way to do some distance driving. And actually, you'll notice we're just, just getting a couple tiny sprinkles right here, and uh, we're also down to 61%. So we're actually gonna flip around at this uh, exit right up here, turn around. The roads are very dry. Uh, I think we just actually got, it's almost like someone just splashed a little bit of water on the car. But uh, we are going to turn around and head back into the headwinds. And one thing that really uh, kind of concerns me at this point is the efficiency being only three miles per kilowatt hour at 70 with a big tailwind. That is not, I was expecting uh, we're way better than that at this point, especially as we're actually at lower elevation than when we started. We're 100 miles in, we're at 61%. So let's uh, make a U-turn at this next exit. We'll come back up and uh, looking forward to seeing how this thing does throughout the test into the wind. It's probably gonna get a lot louder in here, but I'm loving the driver assistance and we're having a great time on the live stream and uh, couldn't ask for a better way to spend the day. So this thing's definitely gonna go 200 miles on a charge at least because we need that to get back. So that's good news, but also no surprise. I'm just gonna inch over as far as I can to give this guy as much room as possible. One thing I find interesting, you may have heard the steering wheel just buzz there because I clipped that left line to give that guy room. It doesn't actually push the wheel to pull you back in the lane. It actually does what my sprinter does and it grabs the inside rear wheel brake to pull the car over. I've never seen another vehicle do it aside from my Sprinter. On my Sprinter, it can't do the steering because it's hydraulic steering. This is an electronic steering rack that obviously works with lane centering. So I don't know why they're using brakes to pull you over, um, but it definitely is an interesting feeling. So we're just going to gently merge back onto the highway. And what's funny, I think it was maybe even I forget which range test it was, but I accidentally, they put up these one-way signs. They used to not have the one-way signs here, and you would just get about halfway down there, and you're like, oh crap, I need to be on the other side. And that's exactly what happened to me before they put these signs up. I was just driving down the wrong way. But now we are good, we're not gonna go the wrong way, and we are ready to roll. You join me now at 50% state of charge. We've traveled about 128 miles so far and uh, all seems to be going great. Three miles per kilowatt hour, even after putting some time in with the headwind. What's crazy is I'm thinking my wind map might be telling me there's more wind than there actually is because I'm not really feeling or noticing that much headwind. And it's not like the Nissan Aria is that slippery. For example, the Tesla Model Y is a coefficient of drag, I believe, of 0.23. This is 0.33, a massive jump. So it's not that slippery of a vehicle. You'd think you'd feel it pushing against the wind, but no, I'm not getting that impression, or it's just very well solid in here. But even looking at the power gauge, it doesn't look like it's pushing through much harder. So I don't know, this test might actually turn out to be very representative of what the Platinum Plus trim will get here, uh, considering also we had tailwind on the way back, headwind on the way out to counteract. It might be working out pretty good. Either way, the conditions aside from the wind are absolutely perfect. No complaints from me. And um, yeah, I'll update you when we hit about 25% state of charge next. We are now on I-25 heading south, and I forgot to give you a 25% update, but we're at 21% at the moment, and our efficiency did drop, and that is because the headwind really picked up. Uh, and that's kind of what I was expecting, but it actually feels like the car would be giving us the same results if there was no wind, or at least very similar, because again, we got pushed on the way out and from behind, and then we were getting pushed from up front. And uh, yep, so we're at 21%. We're gonna basically run up and down I-25 until we're out of juice, and then we'll plug in at 0% at the charger. We have just crossed the 200 mile mark and we are cruising along nicely. And uh, hands on wheel, they are just switched out of, um, yep, just switched out of eye tracking mode. But uh, the range is not looking as promising as I was hoping, especially from an 87 kilowatt hour usable battery pack. But uh, Let's continue. Weather's perfect outside. Everything's looking good. So split ahead. Pay attention to road conditions. Pops up every time there's an exit. <laughs> and then it says vehicles merging every time there's an on-ramp. Pretty funny. We 
we just got our first battery warning and I've kicked us off cruise control. 10% state of charge. We're just looping around as it always gets a little bit busier on this end. We actually always lose cell connectivity so the live stream drops out over here by the Budweiser uh, plant. So we're just making a U-turn heading back up on the highway and we'll go for our final loop here in a moment, but 10%. So I don't know, maybe we'll go up two or three exits, something like that try and get back to the starting point at as close to zero as we can and then we'll burn off the energy on back roads so let's do it we are now on our final highway portion leg and we are at five percent state of charge we're a couple miles away from the exit we'll run it down on frontage roads at five percent the aria shows can't start battery too low please charge now which seems like a pretty aggressive uh warning you'll also see this little white dash right here hands on wheel can't see face sorry car this little white tick mark right there that is our power limit so that's the maximum power we can pull so around 50 percent of power available at five percent which is actually pretty good this car sustains good power all the way to zero this will now be my third time running this car completely to zero and uh, the last two have been really easy really good experiences i'm thinking there must be some buffer below zero as well uh, that would be my guess but we're still a few miles away from the exit i'll let you know the highway range when we pull off and then we'll run it all the way on the frontage roads until we're dead we are now coming up to our exit but we're just making one final pass of the honda insight hopefully we can do it in time before we have to exit and uh, i think we should be able to just sneak around them and pull off the exit right here. So highway range for this, we're pulling off at 4% state of charge. There we go, 224.6 miles on just the highway portion. We still, again, have some left in the battery. So what I'm gonna be doing is regenning down here. We're gonna go run up and down frontage roads and I'll let you know when we hit 0%, we should be able to maintain about 60, 50 to 65 miles an hour on the frontage roads as we normally do. And uh, with the Aria still having this much power on tap, we should be good. I just don't think we can make it the 12 miles there and back, um, you know, uh, to the next exit down and back up here. So we're gonna have to run it on frontage roads to finish it off. We have now reached 1% state of charge. You can still see pretty good power availability here. Uh, we're gonna head out and continue a little bit farther away from the charger. My feeling is there's still quite a bit of energy left in this pack. So let's run it all the way out. Let's get it below zero and hopefully we don't run out, but hopefully we can eat every last mile out of this thing. Welcome to 0% state of charge, but the regen actually just pulled us up to 1% as we pulled some of the pack voltage up there. And that's why when you're running EVs low, you always wanna be gentle on them and you always wanna spike some regen into the pack just to give it some life. We are going to head on down this way now. It should actually drop down to zero on this acceleration run. There we are at zero and we're gonna head back towards the charger and uh, see what the final tally number is. But we are at 0% and we're still miles away from the charger. So let's hope it makes it. If it doesn't make it, um, yeah, we'll, we'll tow it. But I'm pretty sure this thing has a buffer. At least the power levels down here would indicate, yeah, this has got, got a pretty big buffer below zero. We have cruise control locked in at 55 miles an hour, still at 0% cruising along just great. Um, that is the posted speed limit and you know, I think that's uh, sort of a magic thing about Aria is it's kind of hard to mess up this car. It um, When we plug it in and charge it, it shouldn't get max speeds. It only gets max speeds starting at about 6%, uh, but it still does 86 kilowatts on initial plug-in at zero. But uh, these chargers that we use here, the CPE 250s, they can't even give this car everything it wants. So yeah, cruising along, 0%. Still got some distance to go. No, no care in the world, no turtle mode, nothing, just cruising. We are at 0% pulling into the uh, come and go, but this thing is still moving and still has almost 30% power availability. I don't know, I feel like we'd be given in if we just plugged in. I think this thing has more left in it. So we made sure the chargers are available. I say we get a couple more miles on it. You guys, the viewers will see, there's not much, it's not like there's a milestone number that would make it sound cooler, but let's, you know, we do range testing one way, which is we get all the energy out of the battery pack. If it's got some in there, we're gonna use it. And that's exactly what we are gonna do here. We are heading back out on the road, hopefully not to run out and block traffic. That would be a disaster. But uh, hey, sometimes you gotta do it for the vine. So let's go rock and roll. 
we are now down to a power limit of about 20, 25 percent uh, available power and I feel like this should be a pretty good time just to loop back closer to the charger that way we don't run out completely um, you know at least it gives us some optionality so just gentle accelerations pulling out of here and uh, yeah still no turtle mode nothing's showing up on the screen <laughs> we've been driving for a long time after we hit zero so let's see what happens here. Well, we have made the full loop and we have like 21% power limit. So I just kind of want to see what happens when it hits 20% power limit. At what point does this thing kind of die? And let's hope it's not here in the middle of the intersection. I'm just being really gentle on it. Small speed increases. And we're still rolling. <laughs> this thing is still going somehow. So let's get it back up. We'll do, let's do another little run. Why not? <laughs> We're at 20% power limit. Nothing has happened. I'm just being, you know, gentle accelerations, cruising along. And, you know, if the Aria still got juice, we're going to keep going. We are now on our final return leg. Power limit's very low. I feel like we're kind of eking everything out of this. I'm just doing a little regen spikes. I think we are gonna hit 240 miles or close enough, but it's feeling right at the bottom of the pack. That's why I keep doing these little regen hits because um, I can feel it giving power and then trailing off slightly. Um, yeah, okay, I, don't, I, I hope we can make it back. I'm gonna try and build up as much gentle momentum at this point as we can so we don't pull an F-150 lightning situation and run out right over here. <laughs> but uh, let's hope we make it back and then we'll call it a range test. And now pulling in for the final time, the Aria is feeling very, very sluggish and slow. So let's try and keep momentum up. That's full send. <laughs> so I think we're good. We'll make it back to the charger with our momentum now. Let's get it plugged in and I'll give you the uh, final results here in a minute. And uh, sweet, we'll use the same charger we did when we started this test. So boom, here we go. Arrived back. Boom, 0% state of charge, 240.3 miles. So we did hit that milestone. 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour seems pretty bad considering the wind actually wasn't as bad as I was expecting. I need to test other versions of this car to see if they have better efficiency. This should be the least efficient Aria on sale, so maybe we can give it a little bit of a pass there, but still, big battery, not that much range here. So, okay, I'll give you my final thoughts in a second. Let me connect this up to a charger so we don't brick the battery. We have a battery too low, please charge now. If I dismiss that, it actually was saying it can't start, battery too low, please charge now. I think we got pretty much everything out of it. Let's plug it in, get it juicing, and uh, there you go, the final tally. Yeah. And my final thoughts for the range test. Well, big battery, not that much range. I feel like it's right on par, maybe a little bit more than what ID4 would do, probably a little bit less than what Maki -E would do in the same conditions is what I'm thinking. Um, and to me, it's just like for the price of this thing being way more expensive than any of its competition in the big battery all-wheel drive with the nice stuff, non-performance, well, it's too expensive. But uh, we, we kind of knew that getting into it. If you're going to lease it or go for a lower trim, it should have more range, better efficiency. I'd really like to test one of the front-wheel drive ones to see how they do. But overall, that's the Nissan Aria range test. We went well beyond zero, and I really think the wind didn't play as much of a role as I was worried. So I call that a good range test, pretty good conditions, not perfect, but maybe, uh, maybe there's just a couple more miles left in it that we left on the table because of the wind. But I think that's pretty representative of what the Aria will do at 70 miles an hour. So thanks so much for watching another out of spec reviews video. Keep an eye on more coming with this car, charging tests, a whole bunch of other stuff coming soon. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Guys, I'm just editing this video and wanted to add just a quick point here. We went a while past 0% in the Nissan Aria, but I th actually think there was more to go, which I hate to admit is very unlike me not to get everything out of the car. The feelings I was getting at the time, right at the end of this test with constant throttle was this very wavy power output. And to me, that usually indicates like, oh, something's hitting bottom voltage and it's pulling back a little bit before it shuts off. After trying it again, 
Um, the car actually does go into turtle mode. I think we were right on the edge of turtle mode because it happened un just under 20% when this test car went into turtle mode. So I don't think we left much distance on the table. My guess is maybe two to five miles, somewhere around there. I don't think it would have done 250, um, but I think it would have done 240 something. And uh, yeah, apologies for not running it out completely. That's very unlike us here, but Again, this test was slightly windy and some other things. I promise I will redo an Aria range test. And what I really want to do is find a front wheel drive big battery model so we can really get the big distance out of it. So thanks so much for watching. Now we'll see you on another one soon. Bye-bye.